Morning motivators, this is an exciting DIY project. I present you with the ultimate Zwift desk for just $100. So back at the old paying cavern, I did have a Wahoo desk and a Wahoo fan. I didn't hate them. Yeah, they were a desk where I could store things on them, but it took up a lot of space this lengthwise way and in a garage where space is at a premium, all of a sudden that became a big issue. Also, the desk itself, around $400 to $500. The fan, somewhere around $300. So it ended up being really big, really expensive, and to boot, it didn't really have all the storage space that we've got here with this DIY project. So I'm gonna go through exactly how to build this, what the materials are that you need, what the tools are that you need, all for just a fraction of the cost and it took me a grand total of about two to two and a half hours. That's while filming and showing all of you. So if you're handy, give it two hours. Build list for this is gonna be very simple. All it is is two two by fours. So we're looking at about eight bucks there. One four by four by three quarter sheet of plywood, which depending on when you're watching this, it could be as much as $100, but should be somewhere around 40 bucks. And then the optional upgrades that I've included that only add about $60 are these two fans here and some cup holders. I'm gonna have affiliate links in the description below because these are fairly specific items that might be a little bit tough to find the exact right one with the sizing. Tools wise, very, very simple. You need a drill, you need a circular saw, and then if you're doing the upgraded options of having the cup holder and the slot to put your iPad in, then you're going to need a hole saw and something like a table saw or a router. Let's get down to business. So we're gonna start by cutting all the basic pieces, those being the feet and the top. For the feet, you're gonna to wanna to cut two pieces that are 24 out of the two by fours, and then one piece that is 26. You're going to screw the 26 piece down into the top of the 24 inch pieces. And as you're doing that, you wanna make sure the distance between the two by fours at the front where you're screwing it in ends up being the same at the back so it's nice and square. What we've built at the top here is a shelf for resting all of the things that you wanna rest on there, like your nutrition, like your bottles, and then a little cubby so that you can actually put all of your nutrition in there that you wanna store long-term so that you know how much you get into a ride and then you're like, oh my God, I forgot to put electrolytes in or I forgot to grab my bars. In this case, you can store some in there and then it's out of the way. It's nicely stored in there. We're also going to build the cable management to come through this shelf so we don't have a ton of cables just sitting around everywhere. So to do that, we're gonna cut one base shelf that's 27 inches wide by 16 inches deep. The top shelf here is eight inches deep by five inches tall. So for that, you're going to cut 27 inches wide, eight inches deep, eight inches deep, five inches wide twice, and they're going to have a back piece that you want to cut five inches high, but you're gonna cut it a little bit short, 24 inches. I'm gonna show you why that is for the cable management a little later. This top piece, you wanna screw it all together. You don't wanna put it together with nails or with glue, just screws, and I recommend using a countersink bit if you have one so that you can do that and not have everything bust apart on you. Once you've got all that, we have to then actually make the legs for this. We want this to be roughly about 36 inches, three feet to the top of that. That ends up working for my bike where it's a little bit higher than the handlebars, where I'm riding a 52 size bike. So it's gonna end up being a little bit lower, but should be in the ballpark for most people regardless of what size bike you have. So then we have a little bit of figuring to do. We want this leg to be at an angle so that this doesn't wanna tip back and forth because it's going to end up being very back heavy. We need to make these legs go forward and then brace it this way so that it doesn't want to flip flop around. I had a whole lot of math to figure out and basically I'm gonna save you all of that and say this angle is 12 degrees. You can use a speed square for that and just cut that at 12 degrees and cut that at 12 degrees with the entire piece here being about 34 and a half inches high. Once you've done that, 
screw the top shelf into the top of that and then screw the base into the bottom of it with the leg going as far to the front as you possibly can have it. Once you've got that done, you've got the basic look of a Zwift desk. We want to make it stable though. So we want to have these cross members so that if there's ever any pressure going that way, it's not going to collapse and pull out of the screws in the bottom. So you've already got that 12 degree cut from one of the leftovers of cutting these legs here. And then instead of having to figure out this extra cut, just take the two by four, line it up, and with a pencil, just trace a line. Follow that line, it's basically going to be about right. To make sure that this doesn't want to twist and warp and collapse in together, you can take a small little cutoff piece that is the width of these legs, which in this case is 25 and a half inches, and we're gonna screw that in here. That's gonna stop the legs from collapsing in. And then bonus little piece that I ended up creating up here was just cutting an eight inch piece that is 45 and 45 on two ends, doing that with the circular saw and then screwing that all in. Then you've got yourself a desk. This thing is solid as a rock. It ain't going anywhere. I hauled this around in the back of a truck, didn't budge, didn't move one little bit. So this is the point at which if you don't have specialized tools, you stop, you stain it up, you can put your water bottles on here, you can put your nutrition in here, you can put your laptop or your iPad on here. But if you have access to a table saw and a hole saw, maybe even a router, whoo, that's where we step it up right now. I didn't stop there because I'm not just making any Zwift desk, I am making the ultimate Zwift desk. So it wasn't enough that I wanted to just stop there. I wanted to have the bottles being really stable so that they don't fall over because I cannot tell you the amount of times that I've done a sprint, just jostled the side of the previous desk that I had, and then boom, all of a sudden these are off, I gotta get off the bike. And I didn't want this iPad just sitting here flopping around. I wanted it to be nice and stable so that whatever hits this, it isn't going to go anywhere. I also wanted to have these fans built in because that's why we made it this size. So at that point, what I did was I went to a friend's house who has like every tool imaginable. Um, so he had like four versions of everything that you need. What I did here to put the iPad in was I cut a slot with a table saw and I just ended up moving it over a sixteenth of an inch over and over and over until I got to the point that I roughly had about the right angle here. I wanted to make sure that the flat part in that slot was 11 inches long so that if I decide to get an iPad Pro in here that I could still do that. And then I grabbed hole saws that were three and a half inches wide for these cup holders that I bought off of Amazon and I drilled out the holes and then put the cup holders in there. And these specific cup holders have two different widths depending on whatever you're using, whether it's a water bottle or something like a shaker bottle, they can both fit in here. Once I had that done, I came back here, I stained it up because we want to make the ultimate Zwift desk, so it had to look really, really good. Once that was done, I just had to wait for the fans to come in. These two fans are only about $25 each but they actually have a fair bit of kick to them. I looked for fans online that were nice and small, but have reviews like the power is just too much. That's these fans. So for 25 bucks, I ended up getting them in and to stick them down, I put a little bit of two-sided tape on the bottom here and angled them slightly in so it's going to hit where you're sitting on the bike. And the nice thing about these fans as well is that they slide up and down. So if there is somebody taller that comes here, then we can angle it up to meet them. I also drilled out a hole with a quarter inch drill bit in here so that we can take all of the cables from these fans and a cable to charge the iPad here, run it all down, and then put it into a power bar that's in this storage area, it's out of the way, and then I've got it coming out the back to this one inch little slot that we left here at the side for all of the cable management. And now it's done. It's in here. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. It has room enough for a little bit of storage for nutrition, room enough 
for all of the water bottles. Room enough for all of the fans so that we don't need more space than just the size of the desk. And altogether, the total build price is around $100 with no really more specialized tools than what most people would have access to if you know somebody handy. It's time to ride it now. Ooh, feels good to be back on Zwift after like two months away. Uh, if you want to try Zwift, a great way to do it, or if you want to be on like the best supported triathlon team in the world, you can go for the Zwift Try Academy. Go to zwift.com forward slash Z-A try. And at very least you get 10 killer workouts. And at the very most you get on the best supported amateur triathlon team in the world by far. All right, later motivators. I got a ride to do.